This is a spiritual gumbo. It's not a normal one. I wanted to read something to you. And I want you to understand that I really do believe in the Messiah wholeheartedly. But understand that I believe in the scripture. And understand that when the Messiah speaks on the wheat and the tear, I believe that he knows that there are two different organisms of genus of species, one who was truly human and the other one who was kind of human. And when I say this, I say this only to contend one major thing when I read this to you. One moment. Verse 1, chapter 10, out of the book of St. Mark. And he arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea, by the farthest side of Jordan. And the people resorted unto him again. And as he was wont, he taught them again. And the Pharisee came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him? Now understand, when he answers these men, okay, he is, he is speaking double talk right now. Because I, I'm not going to say that I understand the scripture. Let me not even blaspheme something stupid like that. What I do truly perceive is that in the beginning of this book, there were two different creations. And one of them, one of them entails the creation of, of a being that does not have a soul and the other one entails the, the creation of a being that does there are two branch off sections for each character being one branch off section being right after the first man with the soul is ever made there is the understanding that uh the the first clone who is eve is ever is, uh, the first clone ever is created and we believe that this is his first spouse ever but when we read into the context of the words the, the words speak as if well to be lone once again is, is a state of of, of 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 where self has never had companion to be alone is where one is now lonely you understand and lonely and lone even though lone is the the the, the root word for lonely the, 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 when you say I'm all alone and I'm lonely, you're not speaking on the same thing. You understand that? Uh, 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 uh. A lone person who's never, ever, ever seen, met another uh, a person ever in their life, like a person raised by the wolves or some nonsense like that, they've never, they've only been lonely. You know what I'm saying? Like they've, thrive for interaction for something that's like them because there's nothing like them but to be alone is to give thought that you actually were with someone and then they were taken away or that they left and now i am alone anyway you can look up the definitions to the word to make sure that i'm not bsing you i'm not lying so as i read this to you understand that the messiah is not being flipped but he is using double talk to smash the Pharisees into pieces. And this is how. So this is why I was saying what I said earlier. Like, I believe in the Messiah. I really do, you know. And if you don't understand scripture, some of the things that he says will make you think like, oh, he's full of S-H-I-T. But what he's trying to do right now is prove a point. And let's, let's have the point proven. And let's keep in context the mindset of the world before all of this ever happened, how people were supposed to be. Thank you very much. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him? And he answered to them and said, what did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. And Jesus answered, and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of creation, God made them, male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. One moment, bam. 
Now you have to understand is that he jumped from one thing to another. That confused him. Right on? When he's saying like male and female, and then for this cause, he's like, look, dude, guys are going to want to go be with chicks, bro. They're going to leave their house, and they're going to want to go be with the woman. Only somebody totally hard on their heart will want to, why would you want to put her away if this is what you wanted to do? You, This is why you leave home in the first place. For this cause, shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. So he's saying you leave home for the woman. So why would you put her away, right? You understand what I'm getting at now? Okay, get the logic of all this. And they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. So the twain, you see like a rope, right? It, it, he's saying is that they, and, and that's a biology thing. That's a, that's a form of symbiotic, uh, 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 a synergy almost he's saying so they are are, are are two separate paths and now they merge into one whole complete path you see and that is when he's speaking on you know not just the spiritual alignment of the relationship but when they also procreate and make children that is the giving of the two fleshes into one What therefore God had joined together, let no man put asunder. So when he says this, he's saying that once again, why would you get with this woman if the Most High made this like this? Why would you go against that? Who are you to who are you to try to usurp, juxtapose the precepts of the Most High God? Way before you. Right. And in the house, his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he said unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another, commit adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committed adultery. So he's saying that because whether you want to say that, oh, she divorced him or he divorced her, if this woman runs off, leaves her husband and go get with another man, that's adultery. Right on. If he divorces her and she goes gives with another man, that's adultery. If he divorces her and gives with another, and, and, and he goes and marries an, another woman, that's adultery. He says, right on. It, it's it, and it's because you're married to this woman. But they're trying to make it seem as if you can only be married to one person, right here. So this is where they get monogamy from. You understand that? Now. I'm not going to say that that the Messiah was 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 um, advocating monogamy, but he was saying that the most natural relationship is one man, one woman. Before you have a chance to get married to another wife, you have to get one wife first. So we have to keep once again, keep it all in the most basic concept, the most basic form. I can't stress this enough. When you do that right there, it will be very helpful. You know, um, 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 we're going to touch on something else. That was the entire chapter right there. You see, it took eight minutes and 40 seconds to do all that, to, to, to break it all down. I want to read something to you about this Bar Sabas character. Barabbas, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Not Jesus, but Barabbas. Here we go. One second. Now, this is from the book of Mark, right? In the book of Matthew, it doesn't say this about Barabbas. It calls him a murderer here. But I'm going to go and I'm going to get the Matthew part two so that way we can read them together. And then that way you can understand why I'm like, man, they full of it. You understand me? They full of it. But it's okay, because here we go. One moment. We're not looking. Barabbas release. One moment. Now, we're going to start with the Jesus or Barabbas here, right? And that'll be verse 15 there in um, 
chapter 27 of, of Matthew, and then we're going to start at uh, uh, verse 7, no, verse 3 of chapter 15 of the, of the book of Mark. And I'm going to read down and down, and then I'm going to go and read down and down to the other one. And then here we go. So, bam. We have, have right here in, in, in chapter 27. And I said I was going to start at, uh, one second. Verse, uh, Twenty six, forget it. No, 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 not twenty six. Let me start at verse verse sixteen, not fifteen. I, I I just don't want to start way back there. And then they had a notable prisoner called Barabbas. One moment, stop right there. Now we're gonna go get to the not Jesus, but Barabbas part. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that they had that had made insurrection with him. Who had committed murder and in the insurrection. Now, they're obviously accusing Jesus of what now? Right? Insurrection. Are you hearing me? R really understand the storyline and the plot right now of why they really killed this dude. <laughs> We've been told so much. I mean, but it's it's kind of clear. Like, Barabbas was right there. So he's a notable prisoner and one. And then it says right here that he 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 committed this insurrection in the other. Listen, listen he, he, he committed murder in this insurrection. And then other ones try to, other people try to tell you that, that he's a thief. One moment. But listen. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. But the chief priests moved the people, that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered them, and again, and Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I shall do unto him? Ye call the king of the Jews. And they cried out, Crucify him. One moment, stop. Now we're going to go back right here. And they had a no and then they had a, and they had a no, and they had then a notable prisoner, excuse me, called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, "Whom will ye take that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus which is called Christ?" Now listen. To call a man a notable prisoner and then to call him a murderer in another context now the understanding is that this book, even though it it is it is put in order before the book of Mark, it is compiled from some of the some of the writings in this book are compiled from some of the writings of the book of Mark. What I'm getting at is this: is that to call a man notable and to call him a murderer is two totally different things. But what I want you to understand though is that you never hear about this Barabbas guy again. Why would you pick him of all guys? Um, you act like he was they act like Barabbas is the only guy who killed somebody during the insurrection. Why would you pick him? Why? I want y'all to really grasp this with me. What was so special about Barabbas? And where did this Barnabas guy come from? Can anybody tell me? Hmm? Huh? Hmm. You take one of the, uh, 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 I think it's the uh, B's out of Barabbas' name, and put it before the A after the first R, and you have Barnabas. Just like that. One letter, and you switch it, or you just place it before real quick. So you take one of your consonants, you replace it with another consonant, and then you put it before your second vowel, is what I'm saying. And it changes the whole phonetic sound of your name. Saul, 
changed his name to Paul. And he was disappeared for years. So grew his hair, grew his little beard if he could grow one. He looked a little different, but some people was like, man, that's the same dude that was over there not too long ago killing people and stuff, man. That's the same dude. Y'all got to really understand this. Why would they let this guy go? For the You're talking about the Messiah. Listen, this dude has been healing people. Raising the dead. He is the coldest alchemist you ever heard of. Ever. You can't say he's not an alchemist. You can't say it's not alchemy he's using. He knows how to use it and maintain the balance. He's not going to unstrike the balance. But the balance has already been offset, off killed. So he, he could be doing no worse for the planet that's already doomed for destruction than to feed these people right on. Because he knows that this is just a moment. This is just one moment. But did you notice every time how he didn't really want to always teach him, but he seen that they really had a strong desire? Like sheep without a shepherd is how, is how he always feels. And he's like, man, I got to do it. I have to. I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. And then when you hear that they blame him for insurrection in the book of Mark, pretty much, that's what they're blaming him for. You have to really read between the lines. Right. And they're saying he didn't say nothing. He's like, Psh, I don't know nothing, bro. And then, and then they say that the chief priest gave him up for envy. So it's like, yeah, this is the guy that started the insurrection. It's no, not so much more as it is they gave him up for envy that they were envious of him as to being the king of the Jews. Like, you got to read between some of these political lines. Like, yeah, he's the king of the Jews. They were jealous on that note. But if this dude really caused this insurrection, wouldn't you give him up for that too? And wouldn't that be a legitimate reason to want to kill him? But once again, if this dude killed people in the insurrection, why would you let him go? And how? And he couldn't have been the only person who killed somebody. Why would you? Because it doesn't say he's the only person who killed somebody. It just said that he killed he killed people. He uh, he was a. Uh, it says specifically in the book of Mark that he's a murderer. I'm pretty sure that's what it called him. Pretty sure that's what they called him. One second. And there was one named Barnabas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection. Holy, he didn't kill, he murdered him. It's a totally, do y'all understand the difference between killing somebody and murdering them? Like when you murder somebody, right? The difference is that number one, they probably were defenseless. That's number one. And number two, they weren't a combatant. You see what I'm saying? So, the avenger of blood. Though they avenge the blood, when they avenge the blood, depending on how they do it, they could kill that man or they could murder that man. It just depends on uh, circumstances. Circumstances, everything. Fair is not justice. Let me go ahead and say that again. Fair is not justice. I wanted to uh, hit one more thing up. Uh, one more thing in the book of the Acts. Something that, uh, you know, that was pretty interesting when it was made. When it was made uh, clear to me what exactly it is that was going on. One moment. Now, this is about Saul, right? And I'm going to find that Jesus that he preaches part. One second. Because you know, Paul is a funny guy. I'm close because I'm right here where, you know, the fifth persecution. They're so funny. This guy, Paul, is not a good dude, y'all. He's like, you talk about, you know, I mean, I mean, you were you're talking about not good people. Paul and Barnabas are not good people. 
Let me read this to you real quick. <laughs> Listen to what happens when they say this stuff. Let me start at verse 45. Chapter 13. But the Jews saw the multitudes that were filled with envy. But the Jews saw the multitudes. They were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blasphemy. But it doesn't, he doesn't, they don't actually ever say what, it, what they blaspheme. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should have first been spoken to you, been spoken to you, but seeing that you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Listen to this. For have the force for so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to be eternal life believed. Now, listen. It don't say Grecians. It don't say Romans. It don't say the people of Antioch. It don't say the people of Ephesus. It calls them Gentiles. They are a specific thing, but they are a consortium. They are not just one thing. You understand that? Do you understand me? A sp specific doesn't mean that you're just isolated to one phenotype, one genotype. It just means that this is your genus, your your genus class is Gentile. Okay. And the oh, excuse me, whoa, 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 and the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. Now listen to that. Did you hear that? Whose word? Because this is what Paul and Barnabas were preaching. You understand that, right? That word was published all throughout the region. This is the battle we're talking about right here. The Sakari versus the Herodian people. It was like, it's just like right in front of us, y'all. Yeah, this is what it is. If you made it this far, man, I mean, like you're getting the chunks. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul, one moment, and Barnabas, and expelled them out of their coast. But the Jews, now go ahead, now let me go ahead and break this down to you. There are terms in the New Testament when it specifically calls the people Hebrews. Specifically, when it calls them Jews, this is... A, a, a slam okay it's a slam because the term Hebrew could actually not mean Israelite you got to understand that right now see this is deep okay it's not a play on words y'all it's not a play on word Lot was a Hebrew there were a lot of Hebrew people Right on. So when it says Hebrews and it says Jews, I'm not saying that they're used in difference interchangeably, but I think that they're talking about different, different actual different peoples within the the classes. You follow me? Like when it says Jews, it might be like a guy that's a Benjamin Levite Jehudite, like mixed with all three blood, and the Hebrew uh, connotation could mean. And I'd have to look into the words. I'd have to look. I'd have to look up the the, the actual Hebrew. Uh, uh, definition and then the Grecian translation to what they were supposed to mean, what they were derived from, blase, blase, yada, yada. Anyhow, they expelled them out of the coast, but they shook the dust off their feet against them and came out unto Iconium. Now, you know what that means when you shake the dust off your feet, right? It means forget them. But they had already published their word all throughout the land, it didn't matter. Right. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Think about it. Y'all, you got to really understand where this new doctrine came from. You feel me? The New Testament, as new as it is, 
these dudes were producing a doctrine that sounds this is why they were able to take what Paul was this is why Paul is so so far so so much expounded on because uh, even Pauline doctrine that they can say isn't aren't his words you can re you can rely on the fact that that Pauline doctrine follows a specific mindset and a specific mode you see so they didn't have to be Paul it just had it to sound like him that's it it's hard to sound like somebody who's righteous if you're unrighteous. But if you're unrighteous and you tell people things like it's okay to eat anything, right, without giving them the precept that the law said to fast when you ate something unclean. And you shouldn't desire to eat something unclean anyway. And that when it spoke on being circumcised in the heart, it, 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 it spoke on pretty much controlling your heart's desires. You understand me? And it's saying that pretty much the uncircumcised heart has no control over itself. Right. And the uncircumcised ears can't hear. You understand? With that said, I I I I I just have to say that that there would not be rules if there weren't rules. One moment, listen to this. Holy smokes, I never read this before. Saint John uh, chapter nineteen verse twenty. No, verse 19. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the written was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. This Then this title then read many of the Jews. For this place where Jesus crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. I never heard that before. I never read that before. I never read, I ne wow, I never, I never perceived, I never, see what I'm saying? We're all in it. This is an all in moment for me right now. One of those things where I have nothing to prove to you. I'm just reading, okay? There's nothing to prove, nothing. Project Abraham is coming back. I got a bunch of stuff that I've done that I got to get out there. I got to go get the pictures ready. It takes a long time. It's really exhausting putting together still frame movies. It is, you know, and only get like 70, 80 views, you know, where I'm like, damn, dude, I thought I put it down, but apparently I didn't, you know, so uh, I'm just, you know, it's a lot of work, a lot more work than you guys think it is, you know, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have a job where I make a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? I'm most definitely a guy who can say I make less than $20,000 a year, you know. I don't say that proudly. I just know what it is. I don't make a lot of money. So, uh, surely, because that's the case, I do what I can do when I can do while I can do it. Uh, uh, let's leave on a high note. Let's leave on some, uh, if you made it this far, no. <laughs> the book of Genesis. This is something to look forward to. Oh, yeah. This is something to look forward to. This is chapter 13. Hmm. Yeah, chapter 13. Now we're going to split it up. And I'm just going to jump all over for a second. One moment. Twelve years, they said, verse 4 of chapter 14. Twelve years, they served Kadaliamar. Kadali In the thirteenth year, they rebelled. Skipping forward. When, what, uh, no, 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 no. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and with all the victuals, and went their way. One moment. And they took Lot, Abram's nephew, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. One moment. Uh, when it says they took the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and they went their way, when it brings up and they took Lot, Abraham's son, um, excuse me, Abraham's brother's son, Abraham's brother's son who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed, um, they're just repeating the fact that 
that that that lot was among the people that got snatched up when they got snatched up and if i called him abraham's son at first uh, excuse me one moment then there came one that had escaped and told abraham the hebrew for he dwelt in the plain of mamre the amorite brother of Eskel, the brother of Aner, and they were confederate with abraham and when abraham heard that his brother was taken captive see he calls him his brother just there he armed his trained servants born in his own house See, trained servants, it's funny because in Septuagint it doesn't say that. Trained in his own house, excuse me, it, it, armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them to Dan. One moment, now I want y'all, I'm going to skip forward. And the king of Sodom went out to meet them after his return from the slaughter of Kedaliamar and the kings that were with him at the valley of Sila, which is the king's dale. One moment. I'm going to read something to you. I'm going to go back so that way you guys understand that they smashed those guys, right? Put it put it down on them, right? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let me see if it's going to tell the truth here. Nope. Nope. No, they sure don't. One moment. Don't worry. It's already right here on my Septuagint. <laughs> oh, yeah. One moment. And it says right here that, um, excuse me, whoa, 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 there we go. There we go. But we have to go back one page to read about the giants that they were. And it came to pass in the reign of Amarfo, the king of, uh, king of Sanar, excuse me, and Ariok, king of Elisar, and Kadalagamar, king of Elam, and Targo, king of nations, made war with Bala, king of Sodom, and with Barsin. Excuse me, and with Barsa, king of Gomorrah, and with Sinar, king of Adama, and with Sivimor, king of Sabuin, and the king of Balak, this is Sigur, and all of these met with one consent at the Salt Valley, this is now the Sea of Salt, and that would be the Dead Sea. The twelve years they served Kadalagomer, and the thirteenth year they revolted, and in the fourteenth year came Kadalagomer and the kings with him, and cut to pieces the giants in Ashtaroth, and in Karnay, and the strong nations with him, and the Omeans, and the city Say, and the Koreans, in the mountain of Seir. Remember, Esau uh, inhabits that mountain. Uh, to the turpentine tree of Paran, which is in the desert. And having turned them back to the well of judgment, this is Cadiz. And they cut them in pieces, all the prisons of Amalek, and the Amorites that dwelling in Asen. Asad, Asad, excuse me, Assassin Thamar, Assassin Thamar. And the king of Saddam went out, and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Adama, and the king of Soboi, and the king of Balak. This is, this is Sigur. And they set themselves in array. That means, you know, all your, obviously your battle equipment, all that, against them for war in the Salt Valley. Against Kadalagamar, the king of Elam, and Targal, the king of nations. Did you hear that? Targo, king of nations, and Amalfa, king of Sinar, and Ariok, king of Elisar, the four kings against the five. Now, I read that to you because I'm going to prelude a whole lot of things later on. You heard them call them giants in this one. They call them Raphaim in the other book, but that doesn't tell you that they're giants. You have to look all that up. That's nonsense. These were giants. Abraham went after gigantic kings with armies and slaughtered them and it didn't say that he took any losses and I'm going to leave it at that spiritual gumbo out <laughs>